Okay, here's our little site in Ellensburg. Um, it's looking pretty dry this time of year. There's a lot of standing grasses, but it's October, so this is sort of what things look like around here in October. There's our little spot. I'm not sure where the uh, property line is. Looks like they got some mini horses next door. Hi everybody! Just wanted to, we came back to the office after going on our little field trip and we went to see some property in Ellensburg. We're going to do a little overview of how to use the web soil survey to get more information on any parcel that you might be interested in, um, either for purchase or for developing. Um, there's a lot of really good information in the web soil survey and um, just thought you would like to see a little step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use it for those kinds of purposes. Okay, so we're going to do web soil survey. And we're just going to go to the web soil survey NRCS USDA website. My computer's running a little bit slow today. And I just want to give you kind of an overview of what's going on here. There's a lot of kind of technical language on this website, but there's a lot that you can do just as a regular homeowner to get to know your property better, get to know your soil types better, get to know something about the geology a little bit better on your property. So what we do is we start with this big green button here, start the web soil survey. Now, it is a bit technical, um, and you do have to know some things about how to delineate your um, property on this website, which is sometimes a little bit trickier than it probably should be. But, um, but once you get past the navigation and the, what the buttons mean and all that kind of stuff, it's actually super helpful. So we're going to go here. Um, the, this is an area of interest. You have to delineate the area of interest, which is usually your property boundary. Sometimes you might want to do a map that's bigger than your property boundary, so you see sort of what's going on with the soil all around your property. But for now, we're just going to um, do a single property and the soils that are on that property. So um, this is a little bit of an old-fashioned version. So if um, you have to kind of navigate with these buttons here. This is zoom in, this is zoom out, this is pan or dragging something back and forth, and this is zooming to the full extent. So right now our extent is the contiguous US. <clears throat> if we want to zoom to the full extent, then we change our, um, you know, where we want to look at, then we'll do it there as the drop down. Um, first we're going to zoom in as close as we can. We're going to draw a rectangle, so we're going to click and drag. And that puts us into the middle of Washington State. And you can see that there are a few labels here, but it's not super clear. So Yakima is here. Oh, sorry, Telma is here. Chelan is right here. Bridgeport's right here. Mansfield's right here. Now I don't want to click in here when this when this cursor is set to zoom in. What I want to do at this point is I want to pan. I want to drag the map around and try to get to where I want to go. So I can't just click and drag. I have to change the cursor to pan in order for it to do that. And it does take a little bit for it to load. It's got a lot of information in it. And so it really needs um, some some very specific uh, movements here to get to the right place. Now where I'm looking at right at the moment is um, El near Ellensburg, which I think is going to be a little farther south here. In fact, it should be right 
about here. So in order to zoom in, I'm going to have to click again and then click and drag my box to where I want the extent to be. Does that make sense? And I just happen to know that Ellensburg was kind of near where these two highways come together. And it's a little bit tricky to find an address. So there are some kind of quicker ways you can do this. That's these buttons over here. You can go to a specific address. So the address we're going to look up is, I believe it's 314 Susan Road in Ellensburg. So it gives me this option, gives me a couple of others, but this is definitely the one that we want. And we press OK, and it's going to take us to Susan Road. It's not actually going to show us which property it is. Oh, I just made the mistake of zooming in closer. So let's go out. I'm going to click on the zoom out. And what I'm looking at is this area right here. This is the property that I think that I think. And there's, there's ways that we can check things. So on this particular map, I don't know exactly where the boundary markers are. But this is something that's really good to learn. You should play around with these satellite views because there's a lot that you can learn by looking at a satellite picture of your property that go beyond just figuring out where the um, boundary markers are. So what I'm going to do is I think I know where the boundaries are going to be here. When I get to here, what I'm going to do is then draw this little button says AOI. That's the area of interest with a rectangle or the area of interest by a polygon. Now, sometimes I've actually used, I've gone to Google Earth or I've gone to the county assessor's website or someplace else, found a satellite view of the property, and then come back and compared those two uh, pictures, you know, the picture that I find somewhere else to this one, especially property boundaries. But here, if you look really carefully, you can see that this whole parcel is slightly different color than this whole parcel. You can really see it clearly right here. So um, I know that this parcel that I'm looking at is four, about four acres. Um, I know that this is a separate parcel. It's got a separate house on it, right? And there's still this faint line. Usually these faint lines mean fence line. Or there's some difference in the way that the land is being managed, like there's irrigation or there's not irrigation. You can see that kind of clearly right here. There's a property line right here, and this part is irrigated. This part is grazed off more. So you can tell a lot by the color. You can tell a lot by where um, previous boundary lines have been. Uh, fences will usually show up as a line. Sometimes a line is more of a working, like in this parcel up here, this is a big field. These lines may be where there was equipment that went through this parcel at some point and compacted the soil. So the soil isn't, um, you know, you can't, plants aren't going to grow quite as nicely in those compacted areas. But what we're going to do right now is just draw this AOI. And you can do it with the rectangle, but the rectangle that it gives you is not always the rectangle that you'll see. So I usually define it by a polygon. And basically you click on this. You come here, you click to make a point, you click, and we're, it's, we're not going to be too concerned about whether we're exactly right or not. You can zoom in and make it more exactly right if you want to. I'm just clicking on each of these corners and assuming that I'm fairly close. So then I'm going to double click to create the AOI. And basically what it does is it, it takes the points I gave it and it makes this area, right? That's the first page. That's our area of interest up here in the left-hand corner. This is how we set the area of interest. Once we've done that, then we don't really need to use anything else on this side of this particular um, page. 
what we do want to do is go to the next tab. And the next tab is Soil Map. I'm going to click on Soil Map. And what it will give me is the map again with the different soil types lined out. And surprisingly, even on a four acre parcel, this is rather unusual to have one soil type in an area. There's usually at least two or three and sometimes 10 or 15, depending on how big the parcel is and how complicated the soils are there. But this is very simple. So we're only gonna look at the one now these numbers have to do with the soil, um, the soil type. Um, these unit names, map unit name means the kind of soil it has there. This is the name of the soil, okay? And it may have a name that's familiar to you if you're from the area that you're investigating. It may be a town or a feature or a hill or something, some name. It's named after some other feature of the area, but the, this is actually the name of the soil itself. What kind of soil is there? And we can tell that Brysel, I don't know what Brysel is, I don't know where that is, um, but a, it's a gravelly ashy loam, which means a loam is sort of a balanced soil between loam and clay and, so, and sand. So we'll have to talk sometime about the triangle of soil types. Um, loam is sort of in the middle and this is going to be a little rockier and a little bit dustier um, Gravelly and ashy means a little bit dustier a little bit gravelier and but kind of a balanced soil And so this is probably pretty good as far as fertility goes. We'll check that in a minute Two to five percent slopes means the the kind of slope that that soil is on so this is a relatively flat site um, we want to, these are good sites, better sites for agricultural activities than very hilly slopes. Um, and we'll talk about that in another video sometime about slope and how it impacts um, agricultural activities. But this is a, a particularly um, interesting result. And, and I was right on with four acres. I thought that this was a four acre parcel. And even though my lines are not, you know, as exact as they could be, we're pretty darn close. So this is our basic soil map. What I like to do with this, this basic soil map, especially if I'm working with a client, is I want to go up here to printable version. You can buy printouts of the reports, but you can actually just print them yourself and it's a lot cheaper and a lot faster to do it that way. So just go to printable version. It will ask you um, to give it a title. So I will do um, Ellensburg property. And then it, you can change the scale, you can change the sheets, and then you can click view. And it will give you a preview of the printout, which is actually super helpful. You want to do this. Uh, if you have a pop-up blocker, then we want to undo the pop-up blocker. But then it gives you this printable map and you can see that it's basically just the map that we just made on a full page, which is helpful because it's easier to see things at, at a bigger scale. It gives you the scale and then it gives you a legend, which is super, super helpful when you're trying to figure out what this map actually means, right? There's gonna be these um, point, special point features, different kinds of soil units, um, the area of interest is going to be marked, different kinds of water, different kinds of backgrounds, and that kind of thing. And then, I don't know if I can get this to move over. But anyway, uh, this is kind of general information about the maps and, this, and the soil survey itself. But the part that's really interesting is this third page. Especially if you have multiple different map units, different soil types on your property, it's going to list each one, how, how many acres are in that particular soil type, and then the percent of the total area of interest. So if you've got five different soil types, maybe there's 25% of one and 10% of another different soils, you can see kind of the percentage. That comes in handy when you're doing planning. So you definitely want to print this out for yourself. Um, I like to keep my records in 
um, some six part folders. I'll talk about organization of information at some point, but for today we're just going to print these out and take a look at them, uh, file them for later. But that isn't even the most fun thing because this doesn't really mean anything to us, right? We don't know what kind of fertility this soil has. We know a little bit about its composition, but we don't really know anything about how to use that soil for things. And that's where the Soil Data Explorer comes in. This is a gold mine of information for your site. So go to the Soil Data Explorer. It's going to take that same AOI, that same area of interest. It's going to load it up for you. And then you're going to have all these options on the left. Left? Yes. Sorry, I, can't, I don't, can't remember my left from my right. But it's going to give you these different categories of different uses that, can, that that property, that soil can be put to. So for example, if I look here on vegetative productivity, I can click that open and it gives me multiple different ways to evaluate or rank this soil in comparison with other soils for different kinds of um, uses, right? Irrigated crops, range production just means like cattle grazing in, in pastures out in the field, um, um, non-irrigated crops, small grains, wild hay, alfalfa. Some of these um, productivity kinds of measures are only in particular areas. So this one, for example, is in the Palouse, which is sort of in south southern Washington. It might have a, a ranking for that on this p particular parcel, but I think the Palouse is farther south. The northern Rocky Mountains um, for alfalfa hay, for grass hay, for small grains, for wild hay. Um, forest productivity, so if you're evaluating a property for forest wood production potential, um, that's the, the one that you will use. And then a re general crop productivity index. So the one that I'm most familiar with here, you can go in and, and print out all these and, and it will actually give you some very helpful information. But what I've usually used this for is when I'm talking with livestock producers here in the Northwest, Northwestern US, um, we want to know what the range production on that, on that parcel might look like. So I'm just going to click on that one. The description is not really that helpful, but the rating is really helpful. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And then it's going to say this kind of soil that we have here. It's, it's going to remind us this is Brysel gravelly ashy loam. And then this is the rating, pounds per acre per year. This is dry matter pounds per acre. And this says 638. Now, what you'll have to do is kind of compare some different soils and find out how much, um, if that's a good rating or not in your area. Around here, this is fairly low, okay? This is probably low because it has very little water. So it would have to be irrigated to do more, um, to have more production. So we have the units of measure, pounds per acre per year, we have a weighted average aggregation method. A lot of this is technical stuff that doesn't really matter much because what we're looking for is um, just this number right here. And then comparing that number with other ones. Oftentimes in these, um, in these ratings, what will happen is they will say um, it's not good for this because of this factor. So it's not, so if we had say 35% slopes, it might say not in this particular one, but in some of these other categories, um, unsuited for this use because of slope. And that's a super useful thing to know. So super helpful to go through some of these. Let's look at crop productivity index. You can actually print these maps out just the same way we did before. Um, I don't see that button. Yeah, anyway, um, this, is, this is all different kinds of things in here. So um, let's look at a general crop productivity index. Let's look at that one. 
We're going to view our rating. And so there is no data for that site in that particular category of crop productivity. But what we can look at is soil health, how much um, subsidence there is in agricultural soils, whether that's a fragile soil, whether this site is suitable for farm and garden composting facilities, um, whether there's been organic matter depletion in that soil, surface salt concentration. These are all things that are, you know, they're kind of technical things, but these are things that are really helpful to know. Some of them are more helpful than others, of course. But if you want to say build something on your site, if you want to put a small commercial building on that site, for example, we view the rating and it'll say it's somewhat limited. And why is it limited? It has large stones. Um, not very many, not very much, but still it, it is somewhat limited by having more of a rocky gravelly soil. So, so you'd want to know that if you went to go build something on that property. So this is how you do this. This is how you, um, oh, there's the printable version. So you can actually print these smaller reports, these sub reports on your soil map just by doing the printable, clicking on the printable version and then printing those. So let's go through that a little bit. We'll view it. And then it's gonna pop up in a different window and then you can just, um, you know, based on your program, I'm on a MacBook, so it's going to ask me to open it with preview in order to print it. And then I can print it from preview. This actually went to P a PDF, I think. But anyway, it gives you all the info, and then you can print them out. And I like to keep these all together, especially if I've got multiple soil types going on. It will really help me and inform me when I'm trying to figure out what to put in particular areas on my property, um, what's the suitability for those different things, right? If it's got super slope in this section, I'm not going to try to build something there. I might keep sheep on that part because they're going to be able to handle the slope, right? But I'm not going to put irrigated crops in a super slopey area. But this, this particular property is pretty extremely consistent. I'm kind of surprised. So that's how you would print those out. Um, I like to keep them handy when I'm doing any kind of planning work on a property, just so that I have a good feel for what the soils are gonna allow me to do. Okay, so if you have any questions about this, uh, downloading soils data, basically this is, I think this is if you're working with ArcGIS, you can um, go and get the maps so that you're, you can download the maps specifically to ArcGIS or some similar kind of database um, from different, different locations. But it's the Soil Data Explorer. First, mark your area of interest, then do a basic soil map and check out the info there on what your soil actually is. But it's the Soil Data Explorer that is a gold mine of information if you're trying to plan for your farm. and. Uh, it gives you the information on the soil and, and what more information about what you can do on those sites. So thank you so much for joining me today and I will be with you again another time.